time to say goodbye We have the memories of Doncaster Our way back in Iguama Which got us back to the championship At the first attempt But now we have gone as far as you can take this club with your tactical skills Oh Tony, it's time to say goodbye Right, folks, back once again with another match preview. Stop looking forward to Blackburn Rovers' latest match out in the Championship. And, of course, it's up against Reading. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, I'm asking you where the heck have you been, boys? Smash your subscribe button. You bang out today. Good things of Blackburn Rovers' late Championship related. Whoa, football related. we got it all here. Onda Waruski, that's right. For me, it is time to say goodbye, but uh, for Mowbray, for Waggett, for the people of that matter, and of course, Ewood Park, it's pretty much the same shit as usual. Keep on trucking, uh, of course, uh, with Mowbray at charge, unless something breaks between now and, of course, kickoff, which I don't think it will. But anyway, let's talk a look about uh, the match in a bit more detail in just one second. A big, big shout out to the bloody Patreons. I do appreciate the loving uh, that you guys have given to the channels that do, uh, you know, it does wonders for the algorithm, so I do appreciate the supportage make sure you bang subscribe bang a thumbs up and again if you want to support channel in another way you could become the latest member of the gang boys because i'm not talking about the patreon gang uh, check out that link down below but here we bloody go of course take a look at the game itself taking place right here at the majeski that's right of course the two teams locking horns of course rovers uh will be taking on them for the 23rd time we've actually won uh eight of them they've won six and there's been eight draws between two sides over the course of time and mobile's record against of course reading is um I'll have a quick scan here. I'm trying to find it. He's actually played a uh, match against them in his whole manager career and just won twice, losing six times and picking up a couple of draws as well. Let's take a look at, of course, some numbers that matter here. Uh, of course, the two sides have played around about 30 odd games between, of, of course, this season. Of course, when they played one more than us, uh, we are 32 so far. We've got a game in hand. Uh, hopefully, we can move up the chains. Uh, of course, one goal apiece on average, uh, 11 goals, 11 shots of the day uh, for, for Reading, usually uh, within the, every 19 minutes, 14 shots for Rovers. Uh, they pick on an average about a yellow card a game. Rovers picking up five corners on average, but guess what? We're absolutely toast at those. Garbage. Of course, four corners for Ro uh, for Reading. Uh, as for area success rate, Rovers edge that one as we do with possession as well down the foot there. But of course, uh, a better success in uh, pass rate coming out of Reading at the moment. But again, those area success rates, the reason why that number is so high is because we hardly ever use that. Uh, we, we just, maybe we, we, we cross it uh, maybe twice per game. Maybe we get a little bit lucky one of those times and the rest we keep the ball on the ground. It's, uh, it's a a shit show really it's, it's an embarrassment it's embarrassing these figures uh, considering where we are on the table let's take a look at of course uh, the uh, home versus away stats here Reading on average Adam Majeski scoring around about two goals a game and again around about the same sort of shots 12 uh, per match and again uh, pass success rate is much better than Rovers as for Rovers we have around about 15 shots uh, per game we usually pick up a couple of yellow cards on the road five corners once again uh, with an error success rate 56 and again same with possession a lot of possession on the road uh, but it, mount it mounts for nothing uh, but anyway let's take a look at of course some other numbers that matter of course it is the goals per game. Of course, Rovers just ousted in Reading at the moment. Of course, it was our strong suit, scoring a lot of goals, but it's not been the, the case recently. 46 goals for Rovers, 45 for Reading. Uh, they've, they've scored 28 through open play, 13 set pieces, four penalties, no own goals. As for Rovers, 46 of our goals, uh, well, 32 of them come through open play, four set pieces, just four, because we're shit, and six uh, counter-attacks, four penalties. If we can up that set piece uh, stat, then you know what? And it's it's a wild card. It is a wild card. I don't know why we don't optimise it. Have a bloody go. Just have a bloody go. You know what? It's, it's, it's frustrating. The simple things. And I'm no football guy. I'm not a football... I am a football guy, but I'm not a football mastermind. I'm not a tactician. I'm not an analyst. I'm seeing it. I'm watching it re week in, week out. We play the short corner. It's not a surprise. It's not a surprise. If if if, uh, if I can see it, I'm sure Reading scouts and their personnel will just look back a couple of games. Oh, they like the short corner, don't they? 
it's obvious. The obvious the obvious thing now would would, would do would be to mix it up and go for bloody high balls. You've got Brereton who's, who's six foot six foot something. He's a lanky streak of piss. You've got probably Joe Rothwell's pretty high as well for himself. You've got Brathway and Lenehan at the back there. There's four guys that, have, that can provide a bit of height. Why don't you bloody optimize it instead of you playing with your silky skills, which has been found out, Moby? Bloody fine. Just sort something else out. Come up with some alternatives. Of course, these are the, the uh, conceding stats here. 46 goals conceded by Rovers. And uh, let me just back that up. We conceded around about the same amount we scored. Uh, 32 through open play, four set pieces, six counter attacks, four penalties, which has been right, that too much. Uh, as for, for Reading, 37 goals conceded, 26 through open play, eight set pieces, two counter attacks, one penalty, and some shots for stats there. Let's take a look at some more numbers here, uh, where the possession stats come at you. Of course, uh, Reading on the left, Rovers on the right. Uh, Reading uh, keeping a lot of the ball in the middle third as you would expect 25% of their their uh, possession is coming in the opposition third with 30% is in the back which is quite surprising as for Rovers we're getting those numbers up there which is good to see 28% of our uh, possession is in the opposition third but it's not it's not falling down and, and, and you know I will be the first the first to turn my mentality around and be backing uh, back Mowbray but uh, the performances have not been there the last six games have been a shit show uh, and I'll hold my hand up if we would, because uh, I don't see this as a, a, a winning a match for Rovers. But if we could get a win here, it might springboard into something else, and we might get the belief back. We might do a card if we might do a Barnsley and, and maybe string some results together. But the next six fixtures is looking absolutely horrific. It's probably one of the worst run-ins or the worst next stretch. The, the, the next month is miserable for Rovers. And the past the past month has been was miserable, and it was a, a very achievable month of games where we could have and should have picked up more than one point. So that's my that's my ethos. And and right here right now on this form, Mowbray doesn't deserve to be here. The players realistically, I would have been bitch slapping wage fines across the board uh, for the performances that they've been doing, especially with the potential that they supposedly have. Anyway, uh, yeah, Rovers numbers are creeping forward to what they were uh, at the start of the season. The, the more of the possession was in the opposition third, but right here right now, it's more evenly split. 30% in the opposition th in our own third, 41% in the middle and 28% in the opposition third. As for uh, uh, where we're coming down with our attacking avenues, we'll to look at Reading here first. 40% of all their attacking options coming down the left-hand side. Maybe Elise, I think he's a left-sided player, so he might be a key with that. 35 down the right, 25% in the middle. As for Rovers, it's evenly spread, 38% down either side. Of course, Douglas and Nyambi providing the overlaps on the flanks, 25% uh, in the middle. As for uh, shots, 63% uh, of all Rovers shots in the middle, 20% uh, down the left and 17% down the right. As for Reading, 71% down the middle, 16% down the left and 13% down the right. Watch out for Lucas Chow, of course, ex-Rover scoring for fun. We'll take a look at him in a minute, of course. Here are uh, where the shots taking place, 54% of all Reading shots taking place in the 18-yard box, 40% long-range babbles, that's uh, a worry, and 6% in the uh, scrappy w do six yard area as for rovers 49 uh, 59 percent of all of our shots in the 18 yard box four percent in the scrappy w area and of course 37 percent long range badges uh let's take a look at of course the key figures here of course uh lucas Chow has 20 goals uh and i think that's across the board in all competitions the same amount of, of goals as adam armstrong mighty has got himself six motion has got four olise has got four as for uh discipline rich has got himself seven yellows holmes has got four jow's got three and laurent has got three as well no red cards so far as for uh rovers 20 goals for adam armstrong five for Brera. Uh, Elliot's got five and Gallagher's got four. Of course, Gallagher will be out. Elliot and Brereton scoring quite quite recently, so hopefully they can they can bring some confidence back to themselves. Johnson, Lennon, both got six guys. Douglas has got five, as has Rothwell. And Lennon, the only guy with the red card. But of course, the game will take place right here. Yep, it is. It is the Majeski Bloody Stadium, of course. Reading uh, uh, doing absolutely tremendous uh, in their eyes, of course, this season managed by, of course, uh, Veiko Panunovic. And of course, uh, last season, I mean, it wasn't the best season for them, finishing around about 14th, but doing much better this time around. Usually around about 24,100 and something fans will be in the stadium, but of course, it will be empty this time around. Kicking off forward, let's take a look at some of the players that will be absent. Uh, the long, long list of experienced heads uh, is a concern for Rovers. We've got no Holtby, we've got no, no Ayala, we've got no Bradley Johnson, no Gallagher, and, and, and Davenport, you would even put in that mix right now. And also Scott Warren and Joe Reckon. So some youngsters who probably would have featured at the start of the season. John Swift, um, he's not here, is he? Is he not even? Is he? At, is he even at this club? I think he is at the club. He's a key player, massive uh, miss, dead dead ball specialist, of course. Uh, Yoko Maite, Alijara, they are doubtful, but I think I might have even had them in the squad. Felipe Arurona as well is also missing, but uh, yeah, Maite and Alijara have a t have a have a chance to feature. And um, we'll have a look at my starting 11s right here, right now. Let's take a look at them. I've got uh, have I got Maite in there? No, I've got Alijara in there. I've got Rafael between six, Richard at left. Back, Yadam at right back, Morrison and Moore make up a, a strong back four. Been, uh, you know, a 
consistent back four. Uh, Laurent of Rebenotta in the midfield. I've got Olise in the middle, pulling the strings. Ajara and Aluko alongside up, up in the attacking uh, region. Of course, Lucas Jao scoring goals for fun. As for me, uh, this is this is what I think. It's not what Moby thinks. He'll probably go with a 4-3-3. But this is it. This is this is what you got to go for uh, with, the, with the ingredients that you have. I've gone with Kaminsky, Douglas, Lennon, Harwood, Bellis coming in, and Nyambe. Of course, Branthwaite has had a shit show the past couple of games, and I think it's time for him to step aside and give Harwood Bellis a run at right centre back, uh, and then maybe uh, you know have Douglas and, and Lennon on the left hand side of, the, of things pulling the strings there. Travis and Evans in, the, of course, defensive midfield. Of course, Travis will be the energy. Evans will be the the hopefully commanding figure. And then we've got Dak in that pocket, which of course he can be quarterback in there, a little bit push forward the forward. I'll put Armstrong out the left. Screw that shit. He's been a bag of shit down the middle. Uh, he'll still provide pace. He'll still provide uh, something at the left hand side. Uh, Elliot on the right hand side. And you got Brereton's height, who could possibly hold it at the ball. I've seen him uh, do a, a much better job recently holding up the ball and he's got pace and he's got a bit of a rocket of a foot if he can get going. So I think uh, this will probably be suited for Rovers to optimise Dak. Dak is our best, pla uh, best player. He hasn't been at the races right here right now and it's going to take him some time to, to of course get back in the groove. Maybe this season's a bit of a write-off and hopefully we can get him back full fitness next season. Uh, but again, at that, at that point we could have lost Armstrong's goals which might work into our favour. I don't know. I think I think I think if Armstrong was to move, which is the the the, the likelihood, uh, with West Ham looking around other other teams as well, get the money, get somebody of a similar ilk, somebody could hold the ball a little bit, maybe feed to Dak, um, and then uh, and then uh, hopefully other other players can be also brought in with that with that fundage. Uh, let's take a look at of course the recent record between these two sides going back to two thousand six. Uh, there's been seventeen matches between these two sides, just five wins for Reading, seven wins for Rovers. Uh, their biggest win four two was of course the last round at Ebor Park. Our biggest win over Reading was a three one win. Uh, in total, over those 17 matches, Rovers have scored 30 goals against Reading. They've scored 27. There's been five draws as well. On average, Rovers scoring about 1.76 goals against Reading, uh, whereas Reading are scoring 1.5 goals as well. Uh, their form is 33%. Rovers is about eight, so it's pretty shit. They're in fifth. We're in 15th, uh, and our form is absolutely shit. Theirs is not great, but... Um, that would be Boyd on from their last match, which was against Rotherham. Uh, was it on, uh, 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 on the road? We'll have a look at it in a minute. Of course, this is the recent record between the two sides, both home and away. Uh, three wins for them, two wins for us, one draw. Of course, we played each other this season at Ewood as a 4-2 win. If there was, if it was a similar scoreline going in favour of Rovers, I'll be, I'll be very, very happy with that. And the last time we played each other at Reading was a 2-1 win for Rovers. Uh, and also, last, look at that though. Look at the, the recent games between these the last six. The last six, there's been 4-8. Uh, we got 10, 11, 12, 14, uh, 18, 18, 21, 21, 25, 27 goals in the last five games between these two sides. There's goals in this. Uh, and hopefully we can be on the receiving end of more of them than Reading, of course. As for the home versus away, the last six has not been that good. Uh, not been that prolific, but of course still goals in it. Uh, of course, last round at Reading was a 2-1 win for Rovers. Hopefully we can repeat that. Uh, of course, Swift with a late, late one there for Reading, giving them some hope. But we opened up with, of course, Aaron Mostrong and uh, Bradley. I'm going to take a repeat of that any day this time around. That was our first win over them in a, in a bunch of attempts uh, recently, of course. Um, uh, things have changed a little bit then since they're flying high we're flying shit um, of course let's take a look at the recent uh, home versus away form here both sides come into this Reading's last three at home have been three defeats on the spin Rovers last three away have been three defeats on the spin something's got to give here it smells like a draw maybe uh, but uh, I think uh, I've, I've actually made my pick on this one I think Rovers will struggle with this game because the mentality is not there unless some shit goes on but I don't anticipate any shit happening uh, because Waggett and Mowbray are best buds and that's not really the recipe for success uh, in all honesty it's cool let's take a look at the games that all are uh, uh, prior to this, of course, Reading committed this on the back of a win against Rotherham. But prior to that, they lost to Wickham, they lost to uh, Middlesbrough, uh, they did pick up a win against Bristol City, and they also lost to Millwall. As for Rovers, just one point at the post. It's past six, really, if you want to look at it like that. We, they've all been to buy one goals and all this kind of bullshit, if you want to spin it that way. But ultimately, it's not been good enough. It's the poor performances are subpar. The performances are subpar. The results have been just uh, woeful, and it's and it's, it's it's depressing. It is depressing. I'm I'm already depressed as it is with COVID, with my, my, with work situations. It's all a bit down in the dumps. This is supposed to be my outlet of of passion, of joy, of hope, of belief. Even if we were just showing some some fight, some desire. It might maybe uh, change my whole vibe at the moment. Again, we all can't do that. There's, there are teams that will suck it, suck ass. Uh, but right here right now, it's Rovers that are sucking a big old ass. Uh, and hopefully we can change that up. Surprise everybody by beating Reading at their own place. Um, let's take a look at the form table heading into this. Of course, Cardiff are bloody flying high as are Barnsley. Picking up 16 points out of Boswell 18. We need, we, we need one of those. We need one of those kind of forms. But the thing is, the, the, the games are coming up ahead. 
if we were to do that, that would be phenomenal. If we were to go on a run like these guys over the next six games, I would eat, I would eat, I would eat a book. I would eat my bloody book. I would eat my bloody book if we were to go a, a, a fantastic unbeaten run. And when I say unbeaten run, I don't want six draws. I mean, an unbeaten run like that. Uh, pick up 16 points out of the next six games. That is phenomenal, especially with the likes of Brentford, Norwich, Swansea, Reading, Millwall, Bristol City in those next six. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm, I'm safe. I could probably even say I'll eat my headphones. I'll eat my headphones because it ain't going to happen. We're, we're The confidence is shot to shit. I was hoping we could go into the commentary game recently, just the other day, uh, with a win, which would hopefully maybe springboard a bit of belief into this game, which would also bring springboard into the, to the likes of Millwall, which is right around the corner. So the next two games... They're, 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 they're achievable if the Rovers of, of, of September, October were playing. But right here and now, the Rovers of February, bloody hell, we, we, we struggled against Chorley right now. Uh, no disrespect to Chorley. And that's the home and away form. Our Rovers are all the way down here. We are we are down here. Down. I'm, I'm just right 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 there. Right bloody there. We're there. We're, the, we're rooted to the further table. That's relegation form. Bristol City have picked up back-to-back -back wins. They're on the climb. Rovers are... Wag it! Wag it! Wag it! Rovers are in relegation form right now. Goodness gracious me. Sort it out. You're supposed to be a CEO, a, a guy that's supposed to be at the helm of a future uh, a club that's supposed to be going in the right direction. That is not going in the right direction. If Mowbray can't revitalise that, the team, those 11 players that he picks uh, to come out and do the job, something is broken and it needs to be changed. You could bring in, you could become the mastermind, Waggett. You could become the, the, the godfather of choice. You could make this decision. You go, yo, Mowbray, it's time. It's time to step aside. Uh, I'm going to bring in this this dude here. Of course, to the end of the season, he, he could do a fantastic job. He could do a shit job. But can he do a, a, a shitter job than this guy right here? At uh, the, uh, the past six, one point. Uh, it's going to take something to do an absolute shit show. In the next six games, it's, it's, it's looking like the worst, worst form possible. If we can't get any, if we can't string shit together, and I'm getting angry, I'm uh, supposed to be positive. Um, uh, home form, home form. We're looking at Reading here. Reading's home form is middle of the road. One three, lost three. Of course, fortunately, they've lost the last three. Hopefully, they can add a fourth to that. Rovers home form is down in nineteenth. Just one win in six at home. It's an embarrassment. As for our away form, we're in sixteenth, which is okay <laughs> considering. But uh, three defeats on the spin on the road. Reading is sixth on the road. Of course, it's the table as it stands. We're in fifteenth. Uh, pretty shit. Seven, pick up 17 points on the road. We've got five wins, two draws, nine defeats, scoring 22 goals at home, conceding 19. Um, as for Reading, they've had a, a tremendous season as well. Um, you can't knock it. You cannot knock it. Um, but anyway, that's uh, just a little bit what I think about the match. What about the Digicast? DJ, what you got for me? Show me what you're thinking. So far, you've been, I think you've been okay with your picks, but show me what you got, Digi. Take a little look at what she has to think. Of course, heading out of this match, we'll be taking, of course, uh, these next match and matches. And it is a, a grim reading for Rovers. We'll look at that in a minute. Of course, let's take a look at uh, of Reading. They'll take on Sheffield Wednesday uh, uh, on uh, at the Majeski. That'll be on Saturday. Then they'll take on Forest uh, with a bit of a, a, a bit of a rest week for them. Uh, and then it's Birmingham away. Those two two teams should be scrapping. Of course, then it's uh, QPR at home and Barnsley, of course, flying high in the month of April. But look at this. Look at this run of games for Rovers. We have Millwall after this. They're flying reasonably high. Uh, then we take on Swansea at Ewood, Brentford at Ewood, uh, Bristol City at Ewood, three home games. And then it's Norwich on the road. Uh, I cannot see much positivity out of that. We might be able to fumble something against Millwall. Reading uh, this week is also going to be difficult as well. Kick it forward. Let's take a look at what else is going on out in the championship. Usually around about now, I'll go check out the old BRFCS.com form, but it is early. Uh, they're all still in bed, I think. But anyway, of course, these are the possession stats and key stats for the championship. And a lot of them are look good for rowers, but to be honest with you, it's a bag of shit, really. It's, it's all lags. It doesn't really matter what all this shit means because we're shit. Uh, possession waste tied. We are the, the fourth 
fourth best uh, with 55.5% possession. But we have all the gear, no idea. We don't know whether we don't know how to put the ball in the back of the net. Norwich, of course, lead the charge. Huddersfield, like, you can say the same for Huddersfield, really. Uh, have all the gear, but no idea. Bournemouth as well, and Brentford. As for the most aggressive side, Stoke, Birmingham, and Sheffield Wednesday, keep your eye on Watford, make up your power five. As for the Aero Jules, Rovers are up there. But guess what? We don't play the ball up there. So it's just, we're just keeping it as, as is. It's like we, we had a good couple of games with the Aero Jules, and we just thought, you know what? Let's, let's just let's keep it like that. As for shots per game, Rovers are second behind Norwich. 13.8 shots per game compared to the rest of Brentford, Bournemouth and Bora. As for the pass accuracy, Reading are fourth best, 78.9. Rovers are down a little bit, uh, but that's, of course, all stats and stuff. Uh, of course, heading into this week, uh, we've got a whole bunch of games. Of course, Millwall against Preston, Coventry against Middlesbrough uh, in the in the, Neil, in the Tony Mowbray derby. Uh, of course, Cardiff up against Derby, of course. Uh, this is on Tuesday. Huddersfield against Birmingham. Uh, Luton uh, will go to Forest. Of course, Rovers are Reading uh, and, the, and the, the game of the week. Of course, Norwich against Brentford. That's a fruity one on Wednesday, though. QPR against Barnsley. Of course, two form teams there. And Watford and Wigan in the Battle of the W. Sheffield Wednesday against Rotherham. Bristol City against Bournemouth. And Stoke against Swansea. Of course, so this is the table as it stands. A win, though, for Rovers. And guess what? We could go up as high as 12th. And then another win, we could go as high as 10th. But, of course, that's then and now. Of course, we're running our fifth. And for them, they could close it in on fourth. Uh, and that win this weekend, just gone, has kept them in the top six. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Rotherham and Wickham going down as it stands. And there's a bit of a gap between Birmingham and Rotherham at the moment. Because, of course, big win for Birmingham just the other day. Uh, so, the top goal scorers right here right now. Of course, Ivan Tony leads the charge. Uh, fair 25 goals this season. And Armstrong's got 19. He's kind of gone quiet. And Timo Puki is gaming on him as is Lucas, Chow, Kiefer Moore, Powell, Woodrow, Solanke, Ayu, and Pedro, uh, of course, in the top 10. As for the most assists, uh, look at this. Look at this shit show. Where's bloody Elliot? Why? Why is he not in the top? The, 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 why? He's on nine assists as well. Why does he have to be out of the picture? Cardiff, Wilson, Mbembo, Tony, Elise. Oh, 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 what a bloody cock of shit this is. I can't believe this. Anyway, uh, that's what I think about this match. Of course, be sure to give the video some love and smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe. It is, for me, time to say goodbye for Tony Mowbray, but I don't think he will go anywhere. Even a defeat here to, to Reading will keep Mowbray believing, keep Waggot believing that, you know what, it's okay, it's just a blip. Injuries, COVID, all this kind of dull shit. It comes a point in anybody's life, in anybody's job, that it's like time to pack up your bags and bloody move. Uh, for me, it's now. Anyway, that's all I think. Be sure to get the video some loving uh, check out the links down below I'm on twitter i'm on facebook and again i'm on patreon if you want to become the latest member of the of the patreon gang uh, check out the one 25 we could try and get themselves up to 30 it'd be absolutely fantastic uh, but until then be sure to get the video some loving i'll see you all very soon come on mowbray either step aside or pick up a shocking win against reading until then though i'll see you all soon i'm out <laughs>